Welcome to this week's installment of Confessions of a Fitness Professional. I'm your fit pro, Andra Anderson, celebrating 15 years of being a fitness professional. I had a conversation with someone Oh, when I was in um, in Chicago on my week of wellness, I went to the stretch lab. If you've never tried this before, so I'm somebody that I've never I've never heard, had physical therapy or or anything like that. So I've never really experienced being being stretched before. And I know physical therapy is so much more than that, but I think people that have done physical therapy would probably also like the stretch lab, but you don't have to have a doctor's note or anything to go. I just wanted to experience a one-on-one -on -one stretch session. So I signed up for one. It was glorious. I, the person who was stretching me was actually a uh, PT student. So had majored in kinesiology and had so much knowledge about the muscles and tendons and ligaments and really got nerdy about skeletal structure and all of those things. So um, it was it was awesome to to talk with somebody while while getting stretched and to be told that you know everything looks really good. You have great flexibility. You have a great range of motion. I thought that was really awesome to hear, even though I kind of assume those things because I have been injury free, uh, but it's nice to hear it from a professional. But it was such a cool experience being being stretched, having having things stretched like with purpose and intention, and it was just so fun. So I enjoyed that. But I was talking with my my technician, I guess you would have called him, about the fitness industry. And I said, he was like, how long have you been a fitness professional? I'm like 15 years. And he was like, cool, cool, cool. And I think he was probably 25, so <laughs> really young. Uh, so that was an interesting conversation. But yeah, that was the, the end. I know the last episode, I talked a lot about the different things I got to experience on my week of wellness in Chicago. I think the only thing I didn't talk about was the stretch lab. I can't remember if there were other things I didn't talk about. I I think I was heading into my EMS therapy, so electromuscular or I've seen it a couple ways. EMS could be electromuscular stimulation, something like that. So basically it's this machine you get. So I'm finishing up my honey lavender latte from Evergreen. Basically you get to you wear this this vest and it's hooked up to these different magnets that are hooked up to one main system. And it works like 12 different muscle groups at the same time. And the more you contract, the heavier it vibrates. So they give you uh, either like a squishy ball or if you can do it a weight, I had three pound weights, and have you go into different positions like a squat, a lunge, bicep curl, tricep kickbacks, things like that. So um, that was quite the experience. And I could see it being something that people who want the aesthetic of looking like they work out but don't wanna actually do the work, I think that's that's the that's the thing for you. But it wasn't it wasn't terribly expensive, but it wasn't inexpensive. So if you would sign up for like a multi-package, it would have made it a lot less expensive, but I think I paid like 135 for the one session. Um, so yeah, a little pricier, but if you're doing it once a week and you sign up for several sessions, it's probably a lot a lot less expensive and maybe even the you know, the, equates to a gym membership. However, you don't get the benefits of the endorphins and the accomplishment and the cardio and all those things that, that you would be getting if you went to a class or did some strength training or something like that. So all in all, my, my week of wellness was awesome. I enjoyed getting to return to a city and getting to go back to some of the places I really enjoyed with the infrared sauna and the cold plunge and getting a lymphatic drainage massage. It just, it was, it was a great time and something that I highly encourage other fitness professionals to take advantage of. If you can give yourself a little wellness retreat or vacation, even if it's not like leaving your house, just give yourself a break from your usual schedule because you're gonna come back feeling so much better. Um, my Monday night class was amazing. I came, of course, I came back to a heavy weekend of events. I had um, 
well, I ended up canceling my boot camp class, um, but then I had a um, uh, an event, a bachelorette yoga session, a private bachelorette yoga session outside, which was awesome, and that gave me the motivation to update some of my tools in my in my toolkit. So I, I'm really trying to be intentional this year about branding and marketing and making sure everything looks similar. So making sure my logo appears on things. So I've, I've paid to get it stitched onto some things. I've made some stickers to put on different items and it's been really fun to do. And having events like that private bachelorette party were just the extra little push, the motivation I needed to go purchase more mats, go purchase more equipment, that sort of thing. So um, I'm always grateful for those opportunities to to boost my my branding and boost my my equipment and all of that. Um, and then I had a super packed house for our bar and coffee class. So I do that like once a month, sometimes twice a month at a local coffee house with a someone who was a client at one of the studios I used to teach at, she opened up this coffee shop with her husband and it's just the coolest vibe. And it's so much fun to offer that class. And we were completely, we could not have fit one more person in there, which was really awesome, but crazy. Um, and then my Monday night class, I missed my high fitness class so much. I loved coming back and I made it really hard and super fun. So that was, uh, it's always great. So you know, bottom line is if you are an instructor, give yourself that opportunity for a break. You're going to come back feeling just so much better and really missing everybody. And it just, it gives you, it gives you a chance to try some other things and really just give yourself a little bit of a brain break. Cause we're constantly making playlists, doing choreo, like you need a little bit of a break. Um, so that's always a good thing, but I want to confess, I want to talk about, so after trying all of these different kinds of workouts and really loving being a student and, and trying different things, you know, at this point, I've tried just about everything. I've not done any kind of trampoline kind of class. Um, I That would be one to add to the list. Um, but I've really tried so many things. I've tried the silk acrobatic stuff. I've tried pole dancing. I've tried um, heels. I've tried all of your boutique fitness things, the solid core, orange theory. I have not tried burn boot camp. I really hope we go somewhere that has one. Maybe our, maybe our next trip will have a burn boot camp that I can try because I've seen that and I'd love to try that. Uh, but I've tried a lot of those boutique fitness kinds of things. I have not tried hot works, but anyway, all of these different things exist. You know, how, how do you know which workout is the right one for you? So this week's confession is the best workout the absolute best workout that you can do, the most bang for your buck, is the one that you'll actually show up to. That's it. The best workout is the one you will actually do because doing the thing is better than not doing the thing, especially if you are wishing, hoping, you know, praying to be able to do the thing and you just never go and do it. If you have the ability to go do the thing and you choose not to go do the thing, that's worse. It is the best workout is literally anything that you are able to do. And that always blows people's mind when I share it. I mean, 15 years in having hundreds of clients at this point, having tried lots of different workouts, the best one is the one that you're going to show up to do. That's it because you can create the best calendar. You can have the best intentions for going to classes, but if you don't show up, it wasn't worth your energy or your time. Now you might feel like, oh, I would get bored. I need to switch it up. Cool. The work, the best workout for you is switching it up. That's awesome. I think if you stay consistent with something, you're going to see better results over time. But really the one that you're going to feel excited and motivated to show up for is the best workout for you. It really is. That's it. It's that simple. Now for my, my science reasoning friends, don't worry. That's not the only answer. That's the best answer. But the other answer that I like to give, if you are looking for the best workout, it's probably going to have six elements involved in it. And I try to do this with my boot camp class. The elements that you want for a really solid 
well-rounded workout will have elements of push, like a push-up, pull, like a pull-up or something that you're pulling towards you, a lot like the TRX type, type of class, hinge, where you're hinging at the hips, like a, I think like a deadlift or a good morning, a squat, basic squat, weights or no weights, a lunge, basic lunge, could be forward, could be side, could be back, Everybody's knees feel differently about the lunge situation, but there is a right lunge for you. And carry. The carry is the one that I think most classes miss out on because of space limitations. But being able to carry something for a long distance, we call it a farmer's carry, it's a great indicator of your overall health. So if your workout routine has push, pull, hinge, squat, lunge, carry, you're doing great. Bonus number seven is walk. Literally, I spent 20 to 21, was that the year or was it 2022? I walked to 5K almost every single day and I was in arguably the best shape I've ever been in. Walking does so much for your mental well being. If you are doing it outside, you're getting the vitamin D, you're feeling the nature, you're noticing things. It is has one of the low, lowest barriers for fitness, right? It's not running, you're not lifting weights. It's something that a large population of people have access to do. You can do it indoors, you can do it outdoors. Outdoors arguably is better. But again, the best workout is the one that you're gonna do. But if you need the science or the reasoning, you want those six elements with the bonus seven. If you have no idea where to start, I suggest starting with a walk. Go for a walk. and. I like to have my AirPod in my ear and listen to music or a podcast, but lately I've been trying to walk without it and really just absorbing all of the sounds of nature around me. It's also a lot safer, I would imagine, depending on where you live. I'm fortunate that I, I feel comfortable wearing AirPods where I get to walk in where I live, but if you can do it without it, it really does add a different a different element. Maybe not all the time, but if you can try to walk without an AirPod once or twice a week, I think it really does boost boost your your energy and your mood a lot. But your workout is if it has those six or seven elements, you are doing a great job. It doesn't have to have all those elements every single time. Like you can split it up throughout the week. So you know some people like to do splits, like leg day, upper body, core, whatever. But as long as you're hitting those elements each week, you're in a good, you're in a good space. And really well-trained trainers and fit pros will incorporate those things into your workout. You don't even have to think about it. Some of us are mean and include things like burpees and pull-ups and push-ups. And some incorporate more things with like bands or weights or, or, or equipment that can kind of disguise the workout and not make you realize what you're doing. So there's that element as well. But I get asked all the time, what is the best workout? And truthfully, the answer is the one that you're going to show up to do. But I encourage trying lots of different things. I know it can be really scary. And one of the reasons that I like to go take new classes and go to places and try new classes is because I want to remind myself what it's like to be somebody new in class. It, it refreshes, it reminds me I need to always say hello, I need to always say my name, I need to always welcome people and give people the rundown in case they've never been there before. We have, I have several classes of repeat clients, so I don't really need to go into like a lengthy introduction, but sometimes it's good to go back to the basics, sometimes it's good to check in with people and, and make sure you're still doing the things for them. I know them signing up for your classes an indication they're probably enjoying what you do, but it's good just to kind of check in, I think, as well. So that's a good note for, for fit pros. If you have seasoned clients in your classes, make sure you're getting back to the basics and to the, the root of what they're looking for in their fitness programming. But it's always a good reminder and it was it's just so fun to be a student and to try new things. And I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed that. But your best workout is gonna include those six elements. Again, push, pull, hinge, squat, lunge, carry, bonus, walk. And if you want 
ideas for those different kinds of classes, check out my YouTube page. I have a variety of things. I might even look into doing a series that just showcases, okay, these are push movements, these are pull, here's how you put them together. I would love to do that for you. So in the comments or send me a message, let me know if that is something that would be of interest to you to kind of see, all right, what are those exercises? What do those look like? And truthfully, those six seven elements with the walk bonus, they're really good for making sure your, um, your flexibility is in check, your range of motion is in check, and really good for functional fitness. So especially like the squat, the hinge, the carry, I mean, those are things that we do naturally in our lives. So if we are training that way, we're making sure that we're, we're keeping our, our spine in good health, our hips in good health, our knees in good health, and those things will, will help to ensure longevity in your fitness style, your fitness progress. So there you have it, this week's confession. The best workout is of course the one that you will do, but if you are my science and reasoning friends and you need actual written and, and peer reviewed evidence, those six or seven elements are gonna be the ones that you're looking to have in your fitness programming. So your homework, if you have a trainer or you go to classes, is to question your trainer on those different elements and make sure that they are appearing in your programming for fitness. So that's that. And thank you for joining me for this week's confession. And I'll see you next time. Bye.